Welcome to a brief overview of demand. The shape of the demand curve is determined by the law of demand. It states that the amount a customer chooses to consume is the inverse of the price of that good. An inverse relationship, recall, means that when one variable increases, an accompanying variable decreases. At any instant in time, a person will buy fewer of the same good if it is sold at a high price than at a low price. Demand tells us that when the price of a good increases, or becomes more expensive, consumers generally decrease consumption. That is a decrease, for the same good, at the time and location of the exchange. On the other hand, when the price of a good goes down, we choose to increase consumption, all things being equal. Recall that oil and gas price instability starting in 2005 and stretching beyond 2008 caused a decrease in fuel consumed by individuals. Over time we adjusted to lower consumption levels by either driving smaller more efficient automobiles, combining trips, carpooling, or by innumerable other means. Fuel consumers made a peaceful, voluntary, and rational decision to consume less gasoline in response to the higher price. As with supply, we make a distinction between demand and the quantity demanded. Demand is the inverse relationship between prices and the quantity consumed, while the quantity demanded is the specific numeric amount we consume at a specific price. The demand curve is a conceptual device that allows us to understand forces in the economy. The curve represents desires at a single given place and time under only those conditions. Unlike other economists, this economist recognizes that exchanges occur with imperfect knowledge. Times change, economic conditions change, and consumption happens at different locations. At any moment, nationally, there are millions of consumers with different tastes, preferences, and conditions making aggregation of the demand curve impossible. On the individual level, though, the law of demand is a pedagogic tool which allows us to seek understanding. Some claim on the grounds of market failure that government administrators can make better economic decisions. This is fallacious reasoning, and its proponents are misleading. To see a demand curve, let's start with a table that expresses an individual consumer's behavior. The center column represents the price of fuel per gallon and on the right, we see the amount this consumer will buy given the price. From this table we see this consumer will buy 90 gallons of fuel per month at a price of $4.50 per gallon. This is the point highlighted in yellow. This is point G. If we choose a different point, say point B, we see a decrease in price from $4.50 per gallon to $1.50 per gallon. At $1.50 per gallon, gasoline takes up a comparably smaller portion of the budget allowing this consumer the flexibility to drive more places. This is seen as an increase in consumption from 90 gallons per month to 165 gallons per month. As the price of fuel decreased, the consumer had the fortune to use more fuel. As the price increased, the consumer had to cut back and buy less fuel. Let's take the demand schedule and graph it. It is convention to see the price of the good represented on the vertical axis while the quantity consumed is represented on the horizontal axis of a demand graph. The points A to I from the demand schedule have been plotted, labeled, and joined with a solid line. Note that the slope of the line connecting points A to I is negative which reflects the inverse relationship between price and quantity consumed. If we choose point G again, we see that the price is $4.50 per gallon and we consume 90 gallons per month. The blue line is drawn for the convenience of identifying the price and quantity consumed at point G. It is clear that as we choose different points along this line that as prices change, the quantity demanded changes. As before let's shift along this stationary demand curve to another point. Let's choose point B again. At point B, we see that the red lines point to a price of $1.50 per gallon with a quantity consumed of 165 gallons. The decreased price comes with an increase in the quantity demanded in harmony with the law of demand. Together we see what happens when we compare points G and B. We see a drop in prices and an increase in the quantity demanded. Please take note that this is not a change in demand. A change in demand is a shift in the location of the demand curve. 
This is a shift along a stationary demand curve thus. This is a change in the quantity demanded. A consumer is happy consuming at any point inside the demand curve. When a consumer buys a good at a lower price than the maximum price they are willing to pay, the consumer perceives surplus points of consumption at a price and quantity within the shaded area of this graph had positive consumer surplus. The buyer values the bought good more than the sold good within this region. Consumer surplus is good. There are several things that can change the location of the supply curve. A change in the location of the curve is known as a shift in demand as opposed to a shift in the quantity demanded. Graphically, a shift in demand looks like this. An increase in demand is a rightward shift from our starting curve D1 or the blue curve to D2 which is the red curve. We can see here that as demand increases the consequence will be an increase in the price a customer is willing to pay and an increase in the quantity demanded by the customer. When demand shifts, price and quantity shift the same direction. A decrease in demand curve is a leftward shift from our starting blue demand curve D1 to the green curve D3. The result will be a decrease in the price a customer is willing to pay and a decrease in the quantity this consumer will be willing to buy. Shifts in the demand curve can be caused by factors that allow us to buy goods. For example, a shift in our income, or our expected future income, changes our ability to buy goods. An increase in income typically increases demand. An exception lies in the case of inferior goods, where a decrease in income causes an increase in demand. Goods like t-shirts and Raymond noodles are classic examples of inferior goods. Note the name inferior makes no judgment about the quality of the good. It just identifies a class of goods and consumer response to those goods. Other influences include shifts in tastes and preferences, the number of consumers in a market, and regulation which often acts opposite the way policymakers expect. For example, when consumers expect regulation to cause an increase in the price of goods in the future, current demand will increase. That is, customers adjust demand based on future price expectations. The prices of substitute goods change demand. For example, imagine a decrease in the availability of diesel. We would expect diesel prices to rise. This price increase will cause an increase in the demand for the substitute, biodiesel. The demand for complementary goods shifts demand. For example, an increase in the demand for desk lamps will cause an increase in the demand for light bulbs. As with supply, there is elasticity in demand. A demand curve that has a shallow slope is an example of the elastic demand curve. Industries who serve customers with elastic demand curves walk a difficult walk because they are highly price responsive. Small changes in price for example shifts from P to P prime result in large shifts in the amount consumed. This is seen on this graph as the difference between Q and Q prime. In this instance, the shift is the result of the addition of a tax. Some types of food exhibit this behavior. When certain restaurants increase their prices just a bit, their customer base evaporates because there are quite a number of competing restaurants or types of food. The abundance of substitutes helps assure the best quality and mix of products among the firms in that specific market segment. Regions of demand in elasticity come with steep demand curves. Here large price changes will only slightly change consumer behavior. Doubling the price of a single piece of chewing gum, for example, only slightly changes the quantity consumed because the price of gum compared with the consumer's total budget is usually insignificant. Graphically this is seen as a large shift from P to P prime with a small shift in quantity demanded from Q to Q prime. Inelasticity means that customers are not very responsive to price changes. Please feel free to view other economics or public policy videos, or return to the site for more commentary on the intersection of public policy and economics. Thank you for listening and considering these ideas.